everybody. This is Kathy hey. from oh. Edgar Rice Burrows Incorporated. I have a great panel today to share with you. We've got some ERB experts and some wonderful projects going on. So I want to start by introducing our VIPs. We've got uh, Joe Jusco. Who Hi, is... how's everybody? Hey, Joe. We've got Matt Betts. Hello. Author, and we've got Mike Wilfer, who's our graphic designer. Uh, we've, of course, we've got Christopher Paul Carey, who is the director of publishing, and last but not least, our president of the corporation, Jim Sullis. Hi, everybody. Welcome. So we wanted to go ahead and start with um, Christopher, who's going to give some insights as to what we're doing in our publishing currently. Okay, so we. Um, uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs Incorporated has a long history of publishing. Uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs himself uh, founded his own uh, publishing imprint um, way back, uh, when was that, Jim? Nin early 1930s. Um, and, Correct. Uh, um, and uh, they published through, I think, 1967 was the, the last book. Um, and then um, a few years back, um, uh, Jim... Uh, decided to reboot the publishing arm. And so we have a lot of stuff going on. Um, we started out publishing the Wild Adventures of Edgar Rice Burroughs series, and now we have two new series that we're doing. So we have the Edgar Rice Burroughs Authorized Library, uh, which is what Joe Jusco is um, uh, illustrating the covers and the frontispieces pieces for, very gorgeous uh, editions, uh, beautiful artwork and bonus materials. Um, and then in addition to that, we're launching a new um, fiction line, which is called Edgar Rice Burroughs Universe, and we're treating that as um, actual canon. It goes back to Edgar Rice Burroughs' work, so everything is consistent with Edgar Rice Burroughs' worlds and characters, um, and we're really excited about that. And we have Matt Betts on here, the author of Carson and Venus, The Edge of All Worlds, which is kicking off our Edgar Rice Burroughs Universe series. So that book just launched. Um, so we have uh, currently four books out in the authorized library series and uh, uh, this new book out uh, from Matt, uh, Carson of the Edge of All Worlds in the Edgar Rice Burroughs Universe series. Now our big announcement here on the panel um, is that uh, we are about to release uh, the next four books uh, in the uh, uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs authorized library. So we've published the first four Tarzan novels with the gorgeous uh, Joe Jesco covers and now we're coming out with the second set of four, and we're really excited. We're, uh, uh, you know, we're all working at home here. I'm working on getting all the um, bonus materials ready for the books right now, and we're looking at a, a June release we're hoping for uh, on these books. So stay tuned to uh, erburrows.com. If you go to our website, you can sign up for our newsletter uh, and email updates, and you can, um, we'll notify you when those books are ready for, uh, for pre-order. So um, that's the, the best way to stay on top of all the ERB news. So um, um, I'm just going to, I'm going to try to, I'm going to just do a sneak peek here of um, the uh, covers so you can see them and then we'll, we'll show, show them again when, um, uh, hold on a second, <laughs> working out the new technology here. Um, so, all right, let's go here. So we, here we have, the, these are the, um, the new covers, uh, cover art by Joe Jusco uh, of these, these authorized library editions. We're reprinting, we're reprinting all 80 plus of Edgar Rice Burroughs' novels and Joe is gonna do the artwork for all of them. So, um, but I thought I'd give you a teaser there and then we'll, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to, um, Kathy here to uh, uh, talk to Joe about uh, his exciting new projects. So Joe, I just want to say it is a true honor and we are so excited and happy um, with the work that you've done so far and to continue on with you. Um, what did it feel like to uh, accomplish these eight so far? How, tell me how you're, how you're processing all that. Well, I tell you, I, 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 I hope you guys asked uh, about possibility of doing this. I wanted since I first saw the Neil and Boris covers back like 40 years ago. You know, Look at the covers and you were kind of like, I didn't position to get that because you realized that was such a job to do those covers. And here I am 40 years later, covers. I'm it really it, it's a great job. I think my trying to get to do the covers. 
So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm putting everything. I can. I'm so excited. To work. Well, we're really happy with uh, your palette choices and the detail and your intensity. How do you decide how to approach a cover? Well, you know, you you, you, you kind of look at some some of the some of the scenes have been done before, but they are the iconic scenes of the book, and you don't want to do the same thing over again because the books aren't just hard in the jungle. So you have to pick out what side scene is that you think would would capture the image of looking at the cover. You know, they have to tell the book. So if there's if there's a cover where he's fighting at night in the jungle, obviously it's not going to be you know cover cover in the book. Uh, Basically, I you know I, my entire career of picking cover choice has always been what's going to attract the reader, what's going to what's going to keep just passing by and seeing fans because that's held basically uh, the people who don't know this book. You know, it, I, I, it's pretty people who don't you have to grab them. So that that's always my my pick an image that I attract the widest to the book. So, do you have a favorite so far out of uh, the the ones you've completed? Uh, you no, know, it, it changes every time. <laughs> Which is funny. It's like, wow, this is the this is my favorite one so far. <laughs> Next one was like, wow, I, my favorite piece so far. And we, we, Linda and I have a frame up like on the stairway, and it's revolving as one goes into the frame. And so, uh, Lord of the Jungle is in the frame now. I just switched it out to Ant-Man today. Uh, but yeah, it's it, I guess. I, I, I've become more confident. I've gone on a lot more confident in my approach to cover. The first couple I ended up on, uh, because starting something that, that, that was new, and I bought an incredible pantheon of artists. Uh, so, it, 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 uh, I kind of, I, I'm each one now, and, and I'm really having so much fun with them. Once they're done, they're actually the way I want them to, you know. Which is a rare thing for me. Normally, I do nothing about a cover, and uh, I, I'm, I'm those zone entities that uh, I, I one is as good as the one before or better. Awesome, awesome. So, cool. um, yeah, yep. um, you're also doing the frontest pieces. Yeah. How, how are you approaching those? Uh, basically, just the correlates to the book. Uh, but, but also that would be, you know, a lot of times it was the choice for a couple that I, that I decided to get to go with another image. So they, they were like my six. A lot of times, like my pieces, um, you know, because with, with one or two or three, I cover, and it's the one that I think represents the book. And then I had sketches that I left, um, I'll pick that uh, will work as Ant-Man, obviously, that did that with the uh, allowed Ant-Man, which Tarzan is it on. Tarzan on every single cover of Tarzan book. So that, that made it because you've already got people looking else that it is, it is pertinent to the story, but it doesn't necessarily have to would make a cover. So I'm just trying to find something I think would make would make a good piece. I was really impressed and, and love with what, what you're doing so far. Have you ever actually met with Mike Wolfer? He's the designer. He's been doing the cover. I, I, I have not, but I, I'm happy yeah. to find him because I really love what the covers look like. I thought I did. I know that there are times like where I leave enough space up top of the, of, of the covers because it, it yeah. and I realized that doing what I look I love the position. I always like that with the little 3D effect. And I, Job with those, they look amazing. Mike yeah. was the, the creative yeah. uh, inspiration that brought in the African fl uh, map into the oh, logo. Yeah. And we it's love a, it, Mike. You did it's a brilliant detail. It's an absolutely brilliant detail. Where is it? There you go. Yeah, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Yeah. yeah. So that's using the old one of the old classic logos. Yeah. On yeah. The old hardbacks published back in you know way back in the day, um, but but Mike has tweaked it and modernized it. So uh, just a little, just a little. Yeah. No, it, 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 I was saying probably obvious thing, no, and it's perfect. It really is. It, it, it's a some sometimes sometimes the, the, the idea that you 
think think of nobody has and the fact that I've just really I absolutely love it. yeah cool what was yeah. it like designing these covers for who for me yeah well, <laughs> first, first of all, I mean, I, I'm like, I can't believe I'm, I'm getting the digital files from Joe Jusco. You know? <laughs> I mean, yeah. like for me, it's like a fanboy thing, you know, because I've oh. loved your work for years. And I'm like, wow, I actually get to see this art before, like, only a few, handful of people on, on the planet have seen it. So that's a thrill. But um, I don't, there's there's something about these covers that are so easy to put together you know i mean and i think it, it has to do with you know your your choices of color and and your layouts and you know of course you're you're uh giving giving plenty of room up at the top you know for the for the uh trade dress and all right um but every one of them just they just fall together perfectly you know i i oh, thanks thrilled Yes, yeah, that's it. The, 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 these four, the new, the, the next four, are amazing. They really, do. they really, really do. I'm, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of these. Really, I'm proud of the entire. Thing. They look just look. Yeah, yeah, and it, it, they're so very true to Edgar Rice Burroughs as well. Like the colors that you have on that, the Triceratops. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, and uh, it's just very, I'm, very. I'm, I'm, Yep. I'm big on research. I'm big on researching this stuff, and I I I, I read the books. I, I some of them I'm gonna have to read, read some of the later ones, but the first dozen I know like the back of my head. I, I'm 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 kind of sure the things are accurate, and uh, I'm a fresh wild like the chance of it, the fact that I think all of these animals worry with this stuff. I really beautiful artwork. Yeah, gorgeous. I'm taking like my, my approach with these covers is uh, you'll have adventure magazine type stuff because I really think it fits, it fits the subject matter. You know, I wanted I, I didn't want to do like you know Tarzan standing in the jungle on Tarzan. I, I I didn't want static to post that again. I wanted to be adventurous action. You know, and I, I I think I pretty much kind of and, and I think it really works with um how Mike has done the design work on it too, because you have such dynamic images and then you've got like, for instance, in this one on the screen here, you know, like Tarzan's, it's what they did in the old pulps, right? They would put the, the artwork that was go, would go over the titles. Like right. that it just makes it pop. It makes it feel so alive, like it's just coming right at you, you know? So it's yeah. just amazing. It gives it that free, like, like a, a deep canvas type thing. It works really also the titles themselves you know it's 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 very important to have a uh you know the name easily recognizable from a distance you know so we've got that nice red with the gold outline but i didn't want to get too crazy and and intricate with the um with the lettering you know because that that would i didn't want it to detract from uh from the actual image itself you know so we could have had this this crazy like retro uh, old school, you know, like with lots of frills and swirls and and all of that. But I, they're 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 very simple and to the point. And then the art right. really is what it what is what sucks you in. So and you really can't yeah, I can't miss the logo. I mean, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't readable on uh, yeah that's perfect. Just fun, you know. So it, it, it's it's great. I mean, there's no there's no there's no yeah. question what book you're picking up, which I think is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the T, you know, the, the dagger, dagger. T. Yeah. yeah. Dagger T. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's a look that you guys should do forever. I mean, I, I, I love I the silhouette. I think that it, it's a brilliant logo. A real well, we're really thrilled with the way they're coming out, and we're super excited yeah. to offer the next uh, books five through eight available on our website, hopefully the first week of June. So that's what we're shooting for. And I'm just finishing up. I'm just finishing up. Oh, I'm starting uh, book twelve. So you'll have the next four right after that. Which, uh, you know, it's, it's like I, I just think I would take it easy and take it from the Coliseum on the next <laughs> 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 because I, I'm my own person. Really, that is awesome. <laughs> I, 
I should mention, um, you know, for, for people watching who aren't uh, aware of what these authorized editions are, um, uh, we've really packed them full of extras. There's never really been editions like these that have been put out before. So in addition to, to Joe's amazing artwork, um, they have uh, new forwards by um, experts, ERB exp Burr's experts and celebrities. Um, and they have uh, new afterwards that put the, put the books into context, the publishing history and stuff like that. Um, and then in addition to that, they have a, uh, a pretty substantial um, archival section, mm -hmm. um, uh, just bonus materials. Um, uh, we at Edgar Rice Burroughs Incorporated have a, a very large archive of uh, rare and never before seen stuff. I mean, Kathy uh, has for many years been the archivist um, at Edgar Rice Burroughs in Incorporated in addition to being the VP. And um, she can speak to how massive our archives are um, and we're really loading these books to the hilt uh, with yeah. new material. So we have we have, um, we put, you know, like the original um, dust jacket illustrations, the original pulp covers, um, sometimes uh, um, various comic book artwork and covers um, that match, that go along with the story in the book. But also uh, we're putting uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs' original co correspondence in there, a lot of his uh, back and forth correspondence with uh, the editors. Um, and a lot of this stuff has just never been, been seen before. Um, and um, we did a really fun thing in the Tarzan of the Apes one, which was we published um, fan letters. Um, yeah. that people yeah. sent back when Tarzan of the Apes, you know, came out back at the turn of the 20, uh, 20th century. Um, you had all these, if, if you read Tarzan of the Apes, which I hope you have, it ends on a cliffhanger. Um, and so people didn't know what was coming next. And so they were just out of their minds, uh, like just begging Edgar Rice Burroughs to write the next book, which became The Return of Tarzan. Um, but they, they could not stand it. They could not wait. They wanted, they wanted to, to see the next book. And, and it's just, it's, it's pretty, it's almost humorous reading these letters, just the excitement. And it really puts it into context. Like we, you know, we've lived with Edgar Rice Burroughs our whole lives. But these people, yeah. he was new on the scene. He was a brand new author. Um, and it just shows what a cultural phenomenon he generated just right. by his very creativity, just early in his career. He just came out of the gate swinging with, you know, A Princess of Mars and then Tarzan of the Apes. Yeah. Um, and it just changed the landscape of publishing, honestly. Um, and then in pop culture in general. Um, yeah. I mean, even the... It, with the Edgar Rice Burroughs universe, which, you know, we're launching as a, as a series, Edgar Rice Burroughs created that, you know, he, he interconnected so many of his stories, people don't realize that, and that wasn't done a lot back then, and certainly not to the extent that Edgar Rice Burroughs did it, where he actually did create a universe, he had Barsoom collected, connected to mm -hmm. Star, the, the Hollow Earth, um, connected to Amtor, Venus, you know, um, connected to the Tarzan novels, so they were, he had his own thing before, before crossovers became a buzzword in popular culture, um, Burroughs was doing that, you know, and, uh, and to a massive extent and a very, uh, it just made you want to read more and to get, you know, jump yeah. from series to series. Um, it, it just made it seem real, like this expansive universe. Other people had done crossovers before, but nothing like Edgar Rice Burroughs. Um, and, and it really is amazing how influence those books have had on everything. Like, People have riffed on those books, you know, over the years to, 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 to stuff, you know, that 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 Burr came up with. And when you think about how fertile and original and imagination for the time when those books were written, it really yeah. something. It really, really is. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's a great okay, Christopher, to uh, maybe uh, move on to uh, talk about the universe and your and the new program that we're just launching that we just launched actually. Yeah, so uh, as I alluded to, Matt's novel, Carson of Venus, The Edge of All Worlds, just released. It's available in all formats. Um, you come to our website, you can get the special special edition. We have a hardcover edition and a collector's edition. Um, the collector's edition comes with uh, some special stuff. You get a, get a uh, signed book plate and um, you'll get two trading cards. If you order it from our website, that's the only place you can get it. And then um, if you order any of the editions, even the paperback, you get a, a 
collectible Victory Harbin trading card. That she's our, our new character in the Egg Race Bros universe. But um, but it's also available in um, Kindle Kindle format, uh, audiobook. For the first time, we have a, a an audiobook uh, license. Maybe Jim can speak a little bit to that at the at the end here. Um, but uh, so Matt's book is available on audio from Oasis Audio. Um, so it's, uh, and it, it is the first book in a series. So we're, uh, we're gonna be coming out in the next few months with um, a couple more books, um, uh, namely Tarzan Battle for Pellucidar by Wynne Scott Eckert um, and um, uh, John Carter, Gods of the Forgotten by an author named Gary Grable, both fantastic authors, uh, just like Matt. And so um, let's, I'll just talk to Matt a little bit here about, about um, about the experience of writing, writing this book uh, and things like that. So I was wondering when, when, when did you first encounter Edgar Rice Burroughs, um, you know, and what was that experience like for you? Well, uh, my, uh, my family, my dad, my, my aunts and my grandfather, they were all huge readers. And so growing up, uh, I, there was always a stack of books in the house and, or in all their houses. And uh, my grandfather was probably the first place I ran into a uh, Burroughs uh, novel, he would read uh, uh, he would read a lot of pulp, and uh, so he went through and uh, and uh, he would end up selling off a lot of the books when he was done. But he always kept the Burroughs things, so uh, he passed them over to me because he knew I liked action and adventure, and uh, my dad did as well. So uh, we we both uh, read a, a lot of that when I was growing up. So um, it's uh, you know books were always in the house, and Burroughs was a was a big one a, a big uh, uh, part of that. And I'm fairly sure the first one we read was a. a a John Carter book, uh, but I know we eventually got into the Tarzan series and, and some of the others as well. So uh, I've been uh, I've been reading Burroughs since a, a pretty young age, or at least having it read to me at some point. You know, cool. What What are your you know having read a bunch of Burroughs? What are What are your favorites? What do you gravitate towards? What are your favorite? Well, books? I, I'm always, I'm I'm a huge fan of of sci-fi and and uh, you know so so John Carter and uh, and of course the Carson. Uh, of Venus, those were, were the big ones. Um, but I also, you know, my, my, my grandpa was big into uh, Westerns as well. So we read uh, a number of, the, of those. But I, I'd have to say the first one that I really remember, like I said, was probably John Carter. Oh. And having a, a longer series at the time than, uh, than Carson, and I know, we got to prolong that experience a little bit longer. So uh, that, was a, that was a good series to start with, I think. So with the Egg Race Burroughs universe, we're doing something, uh, it's a very grand project. We're really, uh, yeah. I have a whole creative team working with me. Uh, Matt and Mike are, are two of the people that I uh, talk with all the time about this stuff. But like I said, we're, we're uh, making it consistent with Egg Race Burroughs' 80 plus novels. It's, it's a, a massive amount of continuity to keep in order. Um, yeah. and, uh, and so we have, um, uh, video chats together with my creative team because we you know we have uh, like i said gary grable and win scott eckert uh, also participate in that um what was it like for you because you you've um really written mostly i think maybe exclusively in the past your works have all been original works what what uh, uh you know original creations by you uh what what was it like coming into something like like this this big and grand and working with a creative <laughs> team you know well, in some ways, I think it was, you know, it was good for me that we started with Carson because he had much less of a back history than, say, Tarzan and all the books and novels and right. movies and everything else you have to wade through and, and, and uh, you know, get all that right, as opposed to Carson, who had those uh, four books and a novelette, you know, the, the, the shorter uh, novel. Um, it was a little easier to sit there and read them over and over and over again <laughs> until I until I was pretty sure I, I, I had a lot of the, a lot of it right, hopefully all of it right. But um as opposed to also Carson, or as opposed to uh, John Carter, who was also going to be a little bit longer. So for me, it was really first reading the books thoroughly a couple of times, and then going out and exploring, you know, any other information I could get a hold of, whether it was on the internet or, or you know, stories or, or through newsletters and things like that, of, you know, the reaction to it, what people liked about that character and his, you know, group of friends and those adventures in particular. Um, so it was pretty daunting to come into, but again, it was, it was kind of the, the right place to come into as, as, a, as a, having less material to have to go through. Um, but then also having to, uh, you know, Christopher and I going through and, um, 
you know, having to worry about what's going to happen down the line in the next book and the next book and, and what eventually, whether I know what's going to happen or not, knowing, you know, having to set up a character that might be important later on that uh, I don't know why they're important later on, you know, maybe somebody else's book is going to handle that. So it was really, you know, going through and, uh, and just knowing the characters and knowing that world and, uh, and then uh, getting, writing the best story possible. But it was, it was daunting to say the least. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's, you know, daunting to me too, but uh, right. also one of the most rewarding things I've ever done creatively with a team, especially. Um, and we had a we had a great outline for it. And even when we got to the end, we were like, well, maybe that didn't, you know, maybe that character wouldn't do that. Or maybe that character, you know, uh, maybe the fan, a fan would have a problem with, you know, this or, or that. It's really writing it and going, oh, wait, we can't do that. Or, or, or they would do this, you know. So uh, even when I was done, it was still, you know, everyone there had to take over and say, okay, how is this going to work and how is it isn't? So, uh, yeah, it, it was, as you said, a really a, a, a lot of teamwork for this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have, uh, there were... Um, there are two characters that uh, figure prominently in these first four books that we're gonna put out. I didn't mention there's gonna be a fourth book that I'm actually writing called Victory Harbin Fires of Halos. And so uh, Victory Harbin, this, this uh, young woman uh, and sort of her mentor, uh, and sort of an avuncular figure, uh, Jason Gridley, who's from the original um, uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs, Tarzan and Mars books. Um, and he's mentioned in the Venus books as well. Um, uh, he's, uh, he's also in it. So we, we've, we're calling this the super arc, which is a, the Swords of Eternity super arc, which is a, it's going to be a four book arc. It might go beyond that um, in uh, various side projects and things like that. But um, these two new characters were int introduced. And um, that's what Matt is alluding to um, when he's talking about these characters that he doesn't necessarily know what's going to happen to them. Um, uh, you know, Victory is going to have a big epic arc um coming up and uh what was it like dealing with that you know like, i mean you did such a good job uh you know and you kind of just took over i i gave you the parameters and you you just took over you know well i mean you you gave me some interesting ideas about them uh their background and, and gridley was actually you know a character before but but you know this whole new victory harbin was uh you know how to how to how to fit her in here and how she relates to other people and who she knows or what she might have known you know it's all it was all kind of tough but um it, it was fun to try yeah um it was fun to try and figure out how she was going to fit into this and um we'd had, like you said, we'd had phone calls and with everybody discussed, you know, sort of the, the general goings on, but we really didn't go through plot for plot for plot, what was going to happen in every book. Um, so uh, the, when Gary, or when you actually get to the fourth book, you'll, you'll have all the pieces in place or, or Gary will have all, most of the pieces in place when he gets to, to uh, John Carter, but uh, working ahead, you know, or, or working for the first book, it was, you know, I, I didn't know what was coming later uh, beyond the general ideas, you know. Yeah, and uh, you have a very interesting, um, uh, this was one of the things that really excited me about the book. Uh, and then when I read it, it was just amazing. Um, you have a very interesting, unique alien species in the book that, is, that serve as mostly the antagonists in the series. Like, where did you, where did you get that idea from? Uh, they're, they're so original um, and just pulled off so well. Um, uh, they were, uh, I was trying to come up with something, like you said, as original as possible. Um, and I drew a little bit um, from a lot of other things I'd read, from comic books and from, you know, just general ideas I had and sort of melted them together. Uh, the first idea I had was sort of, you know, uh, in the original books, he he had plant people or, you know, there were, there were sort of things that the Angans were bird people. Um, so I had this idea of like a, a, a an armadillo type person and started shaping it from there and use some, like I said, some ideas from nature and uh, just trying to, trying to put together the, the best bad guy I could come up with, which was great until I, until early on, I realized that I made them too, too tough. You know, they were, they, yeah. they were invincible yeah. and I, how am I going to stop these guys? Yeah. I have to stop them. <laughs> so yeah. it was, it was taken, you know, it was, it was, it was taken bits and pieces and trying to come up with uh, something that, didn't necessarily top what what Burroughs had done because he'd had some great enemies on Amtor throughout that series, and he had made you know he had visited a lot of them, 
but I wanted to come up with something that was new and we had a lot of unexplored territory so they could come in and have their own sort of backstory. And uh, it was, it was just sort of putting things together and figuring out what would make a good, uh, a, a good new villain that, uh, you know, that, that might make a, a, a difference in a new book and in, in today's books, you know? Yeah, well, you, you did such a fantastic job in um, kind of interweaving those aliens with this very original um, plot. Um, um, there's a, the book, the book, the novel, the story actually harkens back to Pirates of Venus. Um, I don't want to give a spoiler exactly, but um, uh, it's it's following up on a on a loose thread from the original books of uh, basically what happened when. Carson Napier, when he, he arrived in his spaceship, if you remember, if you read the original books, he parachutes out of his spaceship. And that's the last we know about his spaceship. So uh, it figures largely into the plot. And it was such an original idea, um, such a good idea, uh, that when you initially pitched it to me, I was like, oh, that's it. You know, we got the <laughs> well, well, when I went through it, I, re I was reading these. Um, th that's the very first book and, and a very early part of the first book. And in my mind, I was like, okay, well, that's going to come back at some point. He's going to go find, and yeah. <laughs> it didn't. So I felt like I really needed to, I really, I wanted to know what happened. So uh, that's, that was, that was it really early on. I had that idea. So. Yeah. It's a, it's such a, a great grand idea and the way, the way that you interconnected it all and just uh, build, build and build. And, and it really is like Carson's up against impossible odds in this novel. Like there's just, uh, you're like, how are they going to get out of this? You know, and, uh, um, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a ride. So yeah. thanks. Yeah. I appreciate uh, it. It was a lot of fun to write. Uh, you also uh, co-wrote, um, let me get the main cover issue, um, your first comic book, which is Carson and Venus, the I right. I Mentor, which was co-written co with uh, Mike Wolfer. Uh, mm -hmm. So Matt, Matt came up with the basic uh, plot and then, uh, Mike uh, scripted it. So, um, uh, you know, what was that experience like, you know, like writing your first, your first comic book? Well, yeah, that was, that, I, I still have my collection. I still grow my collection of comic books quite a bit. So growing up, I, I had some friends who were artists and we drew our own comic books and things like that. But to actually have something that was ever going to be on the newsstand was probably not, uh, not, not an issue at that point, but to actually get to do it yeah. and, and to work with Mike and everyone and you on, on this building that story and, and getting it ready to, uh, to lead right up to the book. It was, a, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, working, uh, writing in a Burroughs book was one thing and writing in comics is another big thing for me. So, uh, I, I'm very excited that they both, uh, came off so well. So we're, we're treating this comic book as canon in the Egg Race Burroughs universe. So whenever you see that logo on it, that particular version of the Egg Race Burroughs logo, that means that the, the corporation, Egg Race Burroughs Incorporated, considers this to be in line with Egg Race Burroughs' original works. Mm -hmm. um, so we're very proud of that. It's the first time the company has ever declared a, a canonical camp comic, comic book. I mean, there's been yeah. a huge hit, a lot, an expansive right. history of amazing comic books, but... Um, we're really excited about about this one, and um, I actually wrote the backup feature in it, which is called um, "Pulisadar: Dark of the Sun," um, which uh, launches the the uh, Victory Harbin um, and Jason Gridley storyline in it, which uh, I've retold in a bonus novella that's in, at the in the back of uh, the Edge of All Worlds. Um, so there's we're putting a new story in the in the uh, in the back of each one of these books, a new novelette. Um, and uh, the first several stories are gonna involve Victory Harbin and we're gonna get to have adventures from her. And Mike, Mike Wolfer actually is, uh, has just turned in a phenomenal story um, uh, that's gonna go in Win Scott Eckert's um, Tarzan Battle for Pellucidar. Uh, and uh, I wonder if you, you might talk about that and then maybe just talk a, a bit about the, what's coming up from American mythology in the, in the comics. So. Okay. You know, um, I don't know if you guys, well, I mean, all of us here know, but uh, those watching may not know, I'm editor-in-chief at American Mythology Productions, and we do um, a lot of licensed comic books, uh, like we, we do Zorro and Casper and Three Stooges and Laurel and Hardy, we're all over the place, but like the crown jewels to, to me are our Edgar Rice Burroughs universe comics. Um, we publish uh, 
the land at time forgot, Pellucidar, Carson of Venus, the Moon Maid, and also the Monster Men. We just started uh, a series based on the Monster Men. And we're actually, there's another one that we can't really, I don't think we can really say what it is right now, but we, we have something else big coming. But um, one of the things that we wanted to do at American Mythology, there, there are different ways to approach licensed comics. Um, uh, a lot of companies will, you know, they'll get a license and then they'll sit down with their creative people and they'll say, okay, how can we change this? You know, <laughs> like, what can we do to update it and, and um, put, put a spin on it and completely turn the whole thing upside down and make it something new? And that's not what we're doing. We don't want to do that. We want to make the books exciting and entertaining, naturally. Um, and we want to captivate the readers and we want to um, entice new readers to come in. But the way we're doing that is by presenting all of our series as, as faithful to the original um, novels as possible. Um, as Chris said, there's, there's one series, uh, Carson of Venus, the Eye of Amtor, that, that is official canon. Um, the other comics are not, but we try as hard as we can. Like we pretend they are, you know, like, um, uh, uh, all of the stories take place in very specific time frames of the original novels. Um, we keep the characters consistent and we try to be as respectful of, of the source material as possible. Um, so we were already publishing some Carson and Venus comics when we were, uh, you know, the, the opportunity came to do this tie in with the novel and Chris and I discussed this and we said, you know, what can we do to, to enhance the launch of Carson and Venus, the edge of all worlds, the novel. And we said, well, why don't we do a tie in comic book? but we didn't want to do an adaptation of the actual story because you know, you don't want to see the same thing twice. So I forget if it was Chris, if it was you or I, or both of us that came up with this the idea of doing a prequel story to the novel. And the prequel story is what you see in Carson of Venus, the eye of Amtor. And I've, I've read um, uh, the, the novel, the new novel, and I think it's really cool because in the novel, they make mention of that story that's in Eye of Amtor. You don't have to read that to understand the edge of all worlds, but they make reference to it. Like, hey, remember that time we blah, 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 and he just leave it? Well, anybody who's in the know and who has read the comic, they'll say, oh, I know what they're talking about because I know what happened there, you know? Good. So it's, it's really cool. It's, it's, it's an official prequel, but it's not it's not mandatory that you read that comic series in order to enjoy uh, Edge of All Worlds. And as Chris said too, in the back of Edge of All Worlds, there's the bonus novelette, uh, Pellucidar, Dark of the Sun. And we're, uh, actually I'm, I'm drawing it. Chris wrote the script and I drew, drew the, uh, the story. That is an adaptation of his story. So there's this little backup story in the back of the comics that tells the story of Pellucidar, Dark in the Sun with uh, Jason Gridley and Victory Harvin. So I hope that's not confusing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, essentially what's happening- Just buy them all, you know. <laughs> essentially what's happening is we're doing what Edgar Rice Burroughs himself did, which was he inter intricately inter interconnected. These yeah. People in, you know, th throughout the course of, you know, all when his books were published from the beginning till now, people pick up a book and they're reading it, and they don't need to have read uh, like the Mars series where Jason Gridley was actually introduced to understand what was going on, um, what's going on in a Pellucidar novel if they read, read, read right. about in a Pellucidar novel. You don't know, but then you get a little, like Burroughs would put a little, uh, little reference, and then you're like, wait, there's another story about it? And then you go <laughs> find that story and read it, and it's very addictive. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like when I when I first read uh, the Moon Maid, and and Julian's ship is is named the Barsoom, I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> hold on, just blew my mind. So uh, what what do you what do you have coming up for um, for uh, American mythology? Oh well, we have um, uh, currently we're working on uh, Carson of Venus, the Eye of Amtor, which. 
because of you know because of the pandemic and the shutdown of the comic industry we we got one issue out and we're on hold until the comic shops open back up um but that is currently in production uh there is a second carson of venus series called carson of venus realm of the dead um one issue of that came out and then the shutdown happened so we're still you know putting that together um and you know when the stores open they'll be out um uh we're also working on an a land at time forgot series called the land at time forgot fearless and that's a three issue mini series um i am writing that or, or wrote that um and it's being drawn right now by uh an artist named fritz casas and it's absolutely gorgeous um and it's it's a story that's going to focus on Bowen Tyler and Lise LaRue. Um, we haven't seen a lot of, of stories that center specifically on them yet um, in our in our comic books. So this is kind of like their their solo adventure. Um, yeah, and those are the main char the main original characters from the Land of Time Forgotten novel. Right. You point out right. You don't yeah. know, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, we just wrapped up a Pellucidar miniseries called <laughs> Pellucidar Wings of Death. I absolutely love that series. Um, <laughs> And, and in, in true Burroughs fashion, we, we did a little crossing over and there's, there's a, a co-star in the book who actually becomes a, a pretty important character. And he's not from Pellucidar. He's, he's, he's from the moon. Yeah. So if you figure <laughs> that one out. <laughs> but uh, we're having a lot of fun. Uh, the, the Monster Men, um, uh, Heart of Wrath is another, it's a three issue miniseries and working on that one as well. That's, that's being drawn. Um, I'm writing that one also. Um, and there's, you know, I don't know if it's too early to say this, but we're, we have a new Moon Maid series that is in pre-production and we're creating a new character. Uh, there, there's going to be a new <coughs> Moon Maid. Um, uh, that's all I'm going to say, but it is, it's, absolutely true to you know Edgar Rice Burroughs legacy you know like we're, we're not doing anything weird with it you know yeah uh, just on that point just in sort of in closing uh uh the we Mike and I are working very closely right now um to make sure that they will be canon going forward a lot of these we probably mm -hmm. will be declaring canon I know the yeah. monster and it's just it's one of my favorites uh, of your series <laughs> that you have going on you only have one issue out right now but you have more coming up um and it's just such a great series the artists you have is just amazing and the colorist and and the, and the scripts are just amazing so um it's you know going forward we're basically lining everything up like yeah right or working yeah. on that very closely so that's going to be yeah. great so. especially the top secret project that we can't talk about but we're doing yeah. a whole <laughs> lot of work on that one so so uh, I'm going to turn it over here to, to Jim Solis, president of Edgar Rice Burroughs Incorporated. He has some other um, uh, announcements about various uh, projects that we have in the works. Okay, thank you for letting me jump in. I just got prompted that I'm down to 20% of my battery of my iPhone. <laughs> oh no! I, I better start going real quick. So <laughs> if I blank out, that if I blank out, that's why. Um, just to, to summarize, we've talked about this before at a WonderCon panel, I believe, but. One of our very successful licenses are, is the TARS and the slot machines. And uh, there's three or four major manufacturers and game developers in the field. And Aristocrat Technologies is one of them, which is our licensee. And it's been a win-win deal for three or four years. So we were just slightly dismayed, and that's a polite word, uh, when they shut down all of the casinos in Las Vegas and around, and around the world. And only just now, um, after two or three months, Macau is is slowly coming back to life. And so those machines will be worked on. And I don't know when might be resumed in uh, Las Vegas. So I'll just say now that this is uh, something we're watching. And then next year at WonderCon uh, panel, I can tell you how we weathered the storm. We'll see. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, there is international gaming, a game we have with micro gaming, which oddly enough changed their name to Apricot, a little bit like Google changing their name to Alphabet, but. Uh, it's it's been a very popular worldwide international gaming uh, game, but you can't do that in the U.S. It's illegal in the U.S. Uh, so so far, but that'll change someday. But in the meantime, that's been a successful uh, license. 
in the in the gaming world uh, for for entertainment gaming, we have uh, licensed a French company called Anuman, A N N U M N, uh, and Anuman is developing a PC game that we hope will come out about next year at this time. But separately, there's also a, a company called Fun Train is developing a, a VR, a Tarzan VR and AR game, and we've seen prototypes. And we're hoping in the next uh, 45 days, this will be launched around Memorial Day is the, is the new goal. And uh, they've been enhancing it because it was supposed to come out in the, in the winter, but uh, they said, give us a few more months and we're gonna make this even better. So we're going right along with that. We're looking forward to that particular game. Um, now in the John Carter world, uh, we have an existing role-playing game that's about mm, maybe eight, eight or 10 months old. It's a complete role-playing game that uh, people can spend hours and hours around a dining room table or kitchen table yeah. playing. And, and they're about to uh, release a full uh, Spanish uh, rendition of it, which is, means that oh, cool. uh, this is going, gaining some worldwide uh, attention now. And oh. it's been very successful in the English language and now developing in the, in the Spanish. So we're looking forward to that release too. Um, you know, we have an ongoing talking about comic books. We do have at erburrows.com slash comics our own long um, web comics program. And I say long in the sense of how many of Mr. Burroughs' literary creations we, we put on there. We have 26 different weekly web comic episodes yeah. that are drawn. And about oh, 15, 16 of them are dated, uh, updated every week. And then some of the others maybe once or twice a month. But, it, but uh, for example, in, in Carson Venus that we've been talking about so much, we have over 200 um, episodes now. So that's, two, three years worth of very exciting comics following, following the stories of the whole Venus universe. So we're there to help supplement everything you're doing in American mythology and of course, Matt's mm -hmm. book. And that's a great, it's a great addition to it. Yeah. Um, and, and 200 is, say, uh, Pellucidar 2 has about 200 episodes. But let's contrast that with one, uh, we have two Tarzan strips. One is the Tarzan of the Apes, a classic adaptation, taking Mr. Burroughs books from the beginning to the end, and we're, we're only at Jungle Tales of Tarzan, so we've got a long way to go, uh, yeah. about two or 300 <laughs> episodes. But in the new adventures of Tarzan, instead of 200 episodes, the numbers we're dealing with was like 3,972. Wow. Because what we did at that time was we created, we followed through with the Sunday weekly um, renditions that were in the newspapers for 65, 70 years all the way from what, 1929 it started, and went all the way to 2002, and then there was this hiatus, but that was a number of 30, well, maybe 3,600, so we have kept that numerical sequence going, so we're now at 3,972, and if you think about that historically, it's really unique, it's very unique, uh, so we're, we're having fun with that. Um, in, the, in the movie world, um, we've, we're trying to, put some deals together, but they are frustratingly slow to consummate any kind of a movie or TV deal. And the minute you think you have something going, they, the lawyers get into it and th three months go by and there's one change, but you've got to yeah. go through that process. Um, we do have, again, in the Venus world, we have uh, we do have an option agreement on Venus with a company called Hideaway Entertainment. Matthew Rhodes is the producer of it. And they are, strategizing on how to put together a first movie ever on Carson of Venus. So we're working wow. with them. There's an option agreement for 18 months and then they have a second 18 months. It shows you how long you've got to live with these uh, option periods and then you hope there's a purchase of the, the whole thing. And I think with all the excitement around Carson of Venus that we're, we're responsibly, uh, responsible for creating, I would think that they're gonna move forward with the whole project. So that, that's our hope. Um, we have recently also licensed uh, a Tarzan animation license with, uh, it's uh, called, well, it's a Beerton production, but it's uh, Andy Briggs is one of our early Tarzan authors. He, he's a UK president and he created the three modern day Tarzan books in uh, 2011 and 2012 that was for the younger reading, readers. And um, Andy's come back and really pitched us with that he wants to do Tarzan animation and he can take it and run with it and with his partners, um, We've licensed that and they are going to take about a year to develop that. And at the same time, we also licensed with them uh, Tarzan location-based entertainment game. And that's not been done yet. That's, a, that's not exactly VR, VR and AR, but it's a takeoff of that. 
and you'd play these games at uh, other than at, at home on your PC. So where you'll be going to different arcades and places where you can play play this game. So we're oh. we're at the front end of these things. So maybe uh, again next year's a Wonder uh, WonderCon we can get more specific about them all. So we'll yeah. see. And uh, there's some other things going on. Until we sign something, I really don't want to mention it because it's jinxes. It might jinx it. <laughs> so, uh, um, so that's maybe a, a quick summary of what's going on outside of the, the publishing the literary world. All right. Um, I think we're about here at the end of our time period. So um, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Joe, for, for coming on and talking about your fantastic artwork. We're looking forward to getting uh, books five through eight out in June. Uh, Real pleasure. Thank you, uh, you know, Mike, for, uh, you know, all, all the stuff that you do for us, but with, you know, the design work and with the comics coming out. So, and Matt Betts, of course, thank you for this wonderful novel. Uh, <coughs> It's out there now. I encourage everyone to check it out. It's really fun and it's the whole start of the new universe. So it's the one you really want to go out and get and check yeah. out. So that's available everywhere. It's available on eraburrows.com and on amazon.com. Again, sign up for our newsletter. That's right on the front page of erburrows.com and you can keep up to date on all the latest Edgar Rice Burroughs news. So, and thank you, Kathy, and thank you, Jim, uh, for joining us here. And sure. And thank you to WonderCon for giving us this opportunity to, to reach out and, and talk about all the exciting things going on in the midst of this current world situation that we're yeah. in. So I really appreciate it. So, thanks, everybody. Thank thanks you. a lot. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Okay, bye-bye.